Hi everybody and welcome once again to another Spartan Sports Report here on TV3. Sam and I are happy to welcome the guy that runs a downhill derby here in Connersville, Ray Gully. Ray, welcome. Thank you. And it won't be long. It'll be here before we know it. Before we get to you, we talk about what's happening in the world of sports as the Spartans play this week. Um, today, Monday, the girls' tennis team is entertaining Lawrenceburg on the courts here at CHS. Tuesday, it'll be the tennis will be home to Rushville. Uh, the baseball team will be playing at Centerville, and the softball will be at Batesville. On Wednesday, the softball will be home to Mooresville. On Thursday, the girls' tennis will be home to Richmond, and the baseball team travels to New Palestine. On Friday, the boys' track team will be at Newcastle, and the boys' golf at Newcastle also. On Saturday, the baseball plays a doubleheader at Lawrenceburg. The softball plays a doubleheader at Greensburg. The girls' uh, track team will be going to Muncie Central. Kind of an unusual week, Sam, for the track team instead of a co-ed. The boys go to Muncie on Friday. The girls have one on Saturday. So I wonder why, wonder why they do it that way. I don't know. It's the only usually one. Usually it is co-ed. No, mostly all co-ed, but this is a week that uh, it's not. Uh, the baseball uh, beat Anderson in their last ball game. Their record right now is 4-5. and five. The softball won over Lawrenceburg 17-1. to one. Wow. <laughs> and they're uh, at 7-4 and four on the season. Uh, the track and field team is doing real well. And the girls and the girls tennis team and the boys golf team, they're uh, struggling a little bit. They're they're having problems getting uh, getting victories, but uh, it'll turn around. I hope it will. It will, and hopefully, weather cooperates. They're talking uh, rain later in the week. Yes, and, uh, uh, I know a lot of those things they can still do in the rain as long as it's not lightning. That's, that's that's the key. The nature of the uh, light, spring lightning. sports and that's right. High school. <laughs> well, Ray, a uh, number. What, three for you? This will be number three for the Lions Club doing okay, it. Okay, yeah. number 2013, the Bicentennial Group had it. Right. And then uh, you guys took over in 14. That's right. So uh, we want to thank you for that. Well, we, uh, we enjoy doing it, and it's uh, something for the kids to do. It gives them a little different variety of playing, you know, in sports instead of playing some kind of ball or, sure. or track. It gives them something different to do. Uh, the Lions Club, Everton, and Connorsville Lions Clubs, these guys really do a lot of civic things, Sam. They yeah. certainly do, and I'm a proud member of the Connorsville Lions okay. Club and uh, <laughs> have been for um, over 25 years and sure. don't get to do as many things with them as I used to due to work commitments, but this is one project that I help with and, mm -hmm. and really enjoy. And it's, it does bring out uh, a lot of young people as, as well as the adults. And, you know, the adults uh, that help build these cars, Ray, they have yeah. a lot of fun doing that, too. Yeah, yeah, the adults really get into it, and, and you know, it's usually it's a grandchild or a child that's racing, but the the family really gets into it and roots them on, yes. and, and uh, you know, it's just like, they act like they're at NASCAR, they're, they got their pit crew over there changing tires and brakes, <laughs> and, and uh, they're uh, getting real competitive now. When is the derby this year? Well, the Derby on, we'll be setting up on June the 15th. Okay, that'll, that'll a be a Wednesday, Wednesday afternoon. Okay. Uh, the commissioners let us close the road down on Wednesday <laughs> afternoon. Mm -hmm. And then Thursday will be qualifications along with Friday. And then this year we're going to try to run an adult race on Friday evening. Uh, I think uh, we've got some interest in that. Uh, some of the the adults that's built the cars and stuff want to want to go down the hill and see what it's like. So. We're going to try that this year, and uh, and then Saturday we'll have our normal races. We're going to do the uh, eight and nine year old. Will be a two hundred and ten pound, mm -hmm. and that'll be uh, Saturday. Uh, the That's in the afternoon, eight, I believe. Eight, used to be in the, used to be it used to be the opening event, but yeah, you I, guys have moved it. I think we're going to move it back just because the track gets hot in the afternoon, mm -hmm. and we're going to try to run the heavier weights in the morning when the track's cool. Because when the road gets hot, it really wears the brakes with the, with the more weight. That's that's our thought behind it, and that's mm -hmm. why we're going to try switching them over with the lighter weight. It's not as it doesn't wear the brakes out as much when the pavement gets hot. I see. So uh, yeah. the 18th, that'll be when we race that, and then we'll this year on the. Uh, 230 and 280 pound instead of going by age we're just going to go 10 to 18 and that way they can actually race in both races okay uh, 
Yes. Uh, the adult race, uh, I'd like to see uh, Sam and, and maybe our uh, the guy that runs the station here, John Pousey, yeah. well, uh, in, in that. How I about that? I was thinking maybe Sam maybe and put, Fran. Maybe no, put Fran I have there, to. Maybe, I, I'm maybe there we calling can have the, a grudge race between <laughs> Stan and Fran. <laughs> no, I'm, call, I'm calling the play. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry about yeah. that, Sam. But, yeah, uh, I, I think John's already got his car, and he's already, think he he's, might even be practicing he, on us. He knows yeah. how to do it, so Sam, I think you and John should get Well, uh, should if I can fit in one, you know, I hope build one several years ago on well, the first year and and I know I couldn't have gotten in that one. <laughs> uh, Ray, I know an important date's coming up this weekend, May 1, uh, and registration, doesn't it? Well, yeah, we'd like to have all of our registrations in May 1st. Uh, mm -hmm. Normally we have some late ones and, and we never turn anybody away, but it just makes it easier to plan the race and everything if we know how sure. many contestants we got and we, you know, we have to order t-shirts and stuff for everybody and, and it, we got to get those in so that's why it's important that we get the entries in as soon as we can. Okay the cars I know are all shapes and sizes and things but there's some basic parts that have to be equal. The uh, steering and the braking system has to be American Soapbox Derby uh, brakes and mm -hmm. steering which the, they get them directly from American Soapbox Derby. The wheels and axles have to be to our qualifications, and you can get them from us. They can uh, either call me or uh, they can go on the Lions Club Downhill Derby website uh -huh. and and uh, you know and notify us that way that they need tires and wheels. But uh, we use a different wheel than the Derby does, uh, just because it's cheaper. When the Bicentennial started this, they tried to keep it as the cars as inexpensive as they could yes. to make it more affordable for everybody to let everybody race. Mm -hmm. So uh, they went with a cheaper wheel. The wheels are about half the cost of American Soap Dock Box Derby wheels. I see. I so. see. Yeah. What well, was their registration fee? And the registration fee is $25 mm -hmm. for each race. Mm -hmm. uh, and actually we even lowered the adult race to $25 trying to get more interest in that. Our thought behind it is, is to run as many races as we can. We, we're all set up, and sure. the hard part's setting up and tearing down, so once we get set up, we might as well let them have as much fun as they can and race as many times as they can. Now these weight limits you talk about, this is the car and the driver. Is that car right? and driver, that's okay. right. Okay. We, uh, we raised it to 375 for adults because you get some adults <laughs> like, like Sam and I. We, we, we push that weight limit. So. Uh, uh, time we get in a car. <laughs> Usually the cars weigh right around 100 pounds. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, give or take, depending on how big a car it is. But most of them run somewhere around 100 pounds. Yeah. Sam, you built the car for your grandson. Yes. Yes. And, and he helped me with it. And uh, okay. You know, it was a lot of fun. We did it up at uh, City Garage. Uh, started it and got the layout there. And and then I brought it home and and did the finish work on it. But uh, you know, there are specifications. Wheelbase uh, oh, has yes. to be the same on all of them, all of them. Um, and like Ray said, with the, with the steering and the brakes, the sanctioned by or approved by uh, Soapbox Derby. Mm -hmm. So it's a proven thing that's worked for them for years. So it's a good thing for, for, uh, for safety. And the other thing, speaking of safety, that uh, it's kind of like the Indy 500 when, when um, before you can race, you gotta go through tech inspection. And uh, there are guys there that look over the cars, make sure all the steering clamps are, are tightened and, and uh, uh, ready to go so that uh, we don't have any accidents. And, and from time to time, you know, you've been down there, you've seen it, that a cable will break loose. Sure. But that's why we have the barriers down the side. Right, to, right. And speaking of safety, uh, the drivers have to wear a helmet and head protection and, and any other yeah. safety issues? Yeah, the, uh, right? all the drivers are required to wear a helmet and each car <laughs> has to have a padding around the opening on the car Okay. so that if they do hit that and they don't have a face mask on their helmet that there's actually some padding on, mm -hmm. the, on the car where they're sitting down in there and and as you, in the past, you know, they try to get down as low in the car as they can to, so they uh, you know, don't have the wind sure. as a factor, and sure. so some of them are right down, laying right in, uh, in you, the you, car. You can tell the kids that uh, that know how to, uh, to, to get a little bit of an advantage. I mean, yeah. The, the interesting thing I see is uh, people uh, coming out with saran wrap and putting over that opening behind 
behind the driver to try to keep that air from Isn't going inside something? the car. Isn't that something? Yeah. Uh, tell us why it can't be called soapbox derby, it's downhill derby. Well, in order to call it a soapbox derby, you have to belong to the Soapbox Derby Association mm. and you have to meet all their qualifications, which gets quite expensive. I'll bet. And the Bicentennial called it Soapbox Derby, but they were asked not to after the first yes. year just because yeah. they didn't know that, that they couldn't do that. So that's why we just called it Downhill Derby uh, because we don't. But we know we're not sanctioned. They can't take the cars that they run at our race and run in American Soapbox mm -hmm. Derby because the mm -hmm. axles and wheels are all different. And our axles have to have a 2 by 8 support on them where their axle, they can just run a, they got a square axle that they can just run the axle with no other support on wow. it. Wow. Uh, yeah. yeah. But uh, I think you guys uh, deserve a world of credit for this thing and uh, hopefully we'll have some good weather and uh, Ziegler Road is the uh, south edge of Connersville. It's a perfect, perfect place, isn't it? It's a perfect place, and we've, uh, we've used that every year, and the commissioners mm -hmm. are good enough to let us close it down for, yes. for you know, four or five days so that we can set up and tear down and we can race. Uh, the Bicentennial tried setting up and tearing down, and it just gets to be so much work the time you set up and tear down. and and all the barriers that we have to put up to keep them on the road in case they right. you know they do have an accident you know one of the main things we want to do is keep those kids safe when they're sure. when they're racing and and some of those cars will get up in you know 35 36 37 miles an hour going down that hill and that's that's pretty good speed going down the hill in a in a little car sitting three inches off the road <laughs> Speaking of uh, going down the road, I think we have a little video of uh, of actually being in a car and going down the, the road, the downhill derby on Ziegler Road. And let's uh, here we go right now. You can see the speed picking up there too. It's yeah, 35 to 40 miles an hour. It's pretty good. It is a, certainly a different perspective. You and I sat at the top. And, you know, I help uh, with public address, and, and you and Ronnie have, uh, have actually had the call of the races here for TV3. So a little different perspective there. It's about 30 seconds, and uh, you're at the yeah, bottom, right? You're at the bottom, yeah. Uh, and, you know, we give them 200 feet to get stopped after they cross the finish line, and some of them it takes, you know, almost all that for them to right. get stopped. But uh, if they're an experienced driver and they know how to stop, they can stop probably, what, 20, 30 feet, Sam? Mm -hmm. They can actually shut them down. But some of them, if they, you know, don't watch their brakes and stuff, they take longer. So we give them 200 feet to, to stop. And it, what is it, about 600 feet, not quite 600 feet? The, the, the track 800. itself is actually 850 feet. Oh, is it? Okay. And then we got 200 feet past that for the mm -hmm. braking. Okay. Uh, so we got the track itself with the stop and everything is a, is a thousand and fifty feet. You got a lot of people to help you. I know you got a committee, and then you've got volunteers that you couldn't do it without them. We couldn't do it without them. We uh, the Connersville and Everton Lions Club actually, you know, we we've, we've uh, started going together on a number of our projects just mm -hmm. so we have more manpower. We can do bigger projects together and. And it seems like uh, Connersville and Everton, it, we work real well together, don't we, Sam? <laughs> sure we, it, uh, we're different clubs, but we don't compete against each other. Sure. We work together, and it's, it seems for us the last, I think, well, since we took over the Derby, it's really worked us working together. And, and that keeps, you know, to do these events, you have to have sponsors. And, and you know, in Connersville, money's tight, so... Instead of having everybody going to somebody asking for sponsors, we go together as one and mm -hmm. say, you know, this is Connersville Everton Lions Club, and lots of times even Everton Fire Department will help. And and so instead of having three people going, we just have one person, you know, and and it, it helps out all the clubs. Sure. Who are your sponsors? You have some major sponsors, don't you? Stance is our major sponsor this year. They're already on board. Yeah. Uh, Metronet is sponsor. They well, Stance was a sponsor last year, and then they come back as a bigger sponsor this year. Good. Uh, and then Metronet sponsor last year, and they're already on board. Uh, last year we had Dot Food and. Uh, uh, 
Golf Brothers Autos mm -hmm. uh, or Golf's Autos and uh, uh, Joe Brothers Construction, Baptist Temple was actually a sponsor last year, okay. and and I they haven't they're not on board yet, but I'm sure that some of those will be on board again every year. They uh, help support us so. Yeah. yeah, and this is something that uh, <clears throat> Fran that uh, Connersville and Everton Lions Club don't look to make money on. We we want to provide fun for mm -hmm. for the community and, mm -hmm. and for the kids. We have other fundraisers throughout the year yes. uh, for for our other civic projects, but but uh, uh, this isn't a money maker, but we do need to cover our costs. And uh, you're holding a brochure and these are available? These well, brochures, so. actually we've got them. Uh, they're uh, Golf's has them over, Golf's uh, Auto has some mm -hmm. over theirs. Uh, you can get them online when you go to Lions Club Downhill and Down Derby. You can actually print them right offline. Uh, they've been sent out to all the drivers that have drove since the bicentennial. Okay. We keep a list of all those drivers. Maybe they miss a year or two, but we keep them on our list and we send them out every all the information in case, you know, sometimes they, they get... They graduate and they're over 18. They can't race, but they got younger siblings coming up that can yes. race, and they got yeah. that car sitting in the garage, and they're just waiting on them to come up so they can race. And and so we we send it out to, without the brochures to everybody so that they can register. And and we have uh, we keep trying to reach to people out side of Connersville also mm -hmm. uh, because uh, it's not just exclusive for us. And we have some drivers from Lafayette. Uh, College Corner, Oxford, uh, Franklin County, we have some drivers in Union County. So we have some drivers that come from outside of Connersville to race. Uh, I think there are some pictures uh, on Facebook that folks can uh, can see from past races. Yeah, I, I think if you actually, if you go on our website that uh, there's some uh, YouTubes on there of races. Uh, uh, I think all the way back to the centennial, if you go on there, you, yeah. can, you can see those races. How many, ra there aren't that many soapbox type races anymore, are there? Really? The only ones that I know around close is that they have them over at Morristown, they have one. Mm -hmm. But that's a little different situation. Uh, that's, you have to be, a way I understand it, you have to be a Boy Scout or a Girl Scout Scout to race in that one. Okay. And you have to have do so much community service before you can race in that one. Is that Lions Club sponsored too? Uh, I was thinking maybe I'm think, I'm thinking I'm and, thinking that's a Lions Club sponsored one too, it? but they uh, they don't they <clears throat> restrict them to Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts. It's not an that. open race. So on uh, Friday night at six o'clock will be the adult race. Right. And on Saturday morning at nine o'clock opening ceremonies. Opening ceremonies. First race about nine fifteen, nine twenty. Yeah, just as soon as we get through that and we can get everybody going, uh, and we'll start that and this then, again is for the eight to eighteen year olds. And it'll be the we're gonna race the ten two, I'm sorry, ten. The ten to ten, eighteen ten to year 18. olds and we're gonna it's gonna be the two hundred and eighty pound okay, class. The car and, and driver can car and that. driver. And then we'll do the two thirty as soon as that's over, we'll take a little break, uh, mm -hmm. give the workers a chance to get something to drink and rest yeah, a little bit. Yeah, get some bit. lunch, right. right. And then we'll race that one, and then we'll race the, the younger class 210 later. Uh, you know, it we, we're set up pretty good now. We've done it a few years, and yes. and we, we, we know how to line the cars up and get them ready, and, and it goes a lot faster than it did the first year that we <laughs> raced. Uh, we can we can run them through there pretty quick now. Well, this is an all electronic. I mean, you have an electronic beginning, uh, automatic drop stand on the cars start to roll, and at the finish line, you've got. Uh, it's, it's a not, laser. It's not a human thing down there that no. decides a winner. <clears throat> it's it's a we have a laser that that actually shoots the wheels on the car. Mm -hmm. So the front of the car. That's something. So that. Uh, it, when it's ever let, lane breaks the laser first, there's a light that comes on in that lane so that the people at the top of the hill know who won that heat. And uh, we have the girls that keep our, it's a double elimination, so you, everybody gets to run at least twice. And we have a girl that, we have three girls that keep the uh, 
board for us, and they make sure that the same driver don't get the same lane each time. And, they do a and great job. <laughs> they switch them back and forth in lanes, yes. so they can't say, well, I, the reason I want, lost both times is because I was in that one lane. So, sure. So they keep them switching back in lane, and then when they get down, and the driver's been in lanes the same number of times, they do a coin flip with the kids. They don't let the adults get involved in the coin flip. It's the kids. So they get a, <laughs> and uh, last year we uh, we even got a digital scale that we weigh the cars with. How about that? So uh, it's uh, pretty precise on the weighing the cars in now yeah. too with car and driver. And it's a great thing for the fans to come out and watch too. You guys have got seating arrangements made for them. Bleachers are, are installed on the north side. And uh, it's great for the, for the folks. Yeah, it's uh, the uh, the city helps has, has always helped us out good. As long with the county, the city uh, they bring out bleachers from one of the ballparks and mm -hmm. and set there for us, and uh, and then they help with uh, barriers and stuff. And then we have barrels that we sit along the side to help you know hold barriers and stuff in place. And uh, the Everton Fire Department comes out and fills all them barrels with water for us, and and. Uh, so it's it's a community project. The Lions Clubs are the the head of it, but it takes it takes the whole community to put this race on. Yeah, when the one race is over, I think you start on the next one, don't you? Yeah, we uh, it's, it's uh, it don't just happen the day <laughs> of the race. We we start having meetings. In fact, we have our kickoff in February. We have a we've had a banquet the last two years, and that's yes. really went well. And yes. I think they really enjoy that and. Uh, that gives the kids a chance to personally see the sponsors that that make it, uh, you know, so that they can race. And that way the sponsors can see the kids and they can talk to each other. And I think it's important that the kids know that the community has to put in a lot of work and sponsors have to to support this in order for them to be able to race and not have to raise the entry fees, you know, keep them at sure. the $25. Uh, you know, it takes... It takes somewhere around four thousand dollars to put this race on, so mm -hmm. we couldn't do it with just off entry fees unless we was charging, you know, hundred dollars a car. So, right. in order to right. keep the entry fees down, we have to have sponsors, and we, we've, we've had uh, great sponsors uh, every year that we've done it. And you know, you mentioned that money is tight here in Connorsville and Fayette <coughs> County, but uh, this community pulls together for things like this, and I think it's something that. We as a community, a county and a city can be very proud that um, uh, we have businesses that come together and an organization like the Lions Club that uh, to help out the kids and, and give them something fun to do. The other thing that um, I wanted to mention is uh, food is available out there at, at hey. concession stands. Uh, Lions Club as, as well as the uh, last several years uh, Higher Praise Church which is just right up the right up the top of the hill mm -hmm. um, help out and allow us to park in there and um, we certainly appreciate them. Yes, yes. Right, it's a double elimination. Uh, yeah, there's a winner and a loser bracket, right? right? There's a winner and a loser bracket. Okay. Just, just like when you have a, a softball tourney or whatever mm -hmm. and the loser goes into the loser's bracket and then you can go all the way through the loser's bracket and come back and you know and at the end and and actually win the race. Out well, of we've seen that happen. Yes, that's happened. Yes. And and I I it's always amazed me when you get down to the end that out of the weight limits uh, class or the three classes, you know, there's first and second, and the majority of the time there's there's four girls and that's one and two boys. And, and <laughs> right. I, I don't I don't know why that is, but it seems like the girls really uh, they really get in there and compete, and they uh, they really make the boys. Uh, Make them work. Make them work for it if they <laughs> want to win the race. Yeah, I'm surprised when I see so many many young ladies out there racing and being very successful. And if, if you're a winner, you get a handsome trophy. I've yeah, seen some they, handsome trophies given out. Uh, the winners every year, we've, we've gave, a, the, the Bicentennial started giving out a silver cup for the winner, mm -hmm. and so we've stuck with that, and the winner gets a, a silver cup. And we give, we've been given five places. The second place gets a trophy, and third place gets a trophy, and then fourth and fifth place gets a plaque. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're nice plaques. Nice. And, and uh, but <coughs> we uh, we've done that since we've taken over. And uh, then also on Sunday we've uh, we've we've got some cars that's got the American Soapbox Derby bodies on them, which they're a little more streamlined. Uh, 
So we have, we on Sunday we have a class that's just homemade cars that can't be a bought and body car. Mm -hmm. and, then we'll, and then we'll have another race of just the uh, bought and body cars, the American Soapbox body cars, uh, just to kind of split them up. And that way it's all homemade cars racing against each other, so there's no... And those can get pretty elaborate, pretty fancy and, those, and pretty. If, yeah, if you, if you go online and look at some of those cars, there's some a lot of different body styles and paint schemes and... Uh, you know, it just, it's just amazing the creativity they put into some of the cars. Uh, these soapbox, they're built from kit, kits, and can they be used on sa in Saturday's races too? Yeah, they just oh, okay. have, to, they have to use our axles and, and our wheels. All right. Okay. Which they have to do some modification in order to be able to use our axles and wheels. It's a little more inexpensive, though, to make a homemade car, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Uh, I think when the Bicentennial started, they, they made a car just to see how much it would cost them. And I think about $250 is about what it I cost see. them to, to build a car from scratch. Mm -hmm. And there's some, some nice cars that was built. Yes. Uh, and, uh, you know, the derby cars, those things can run all the way up five, six, seven hundred dollars $700 on one of them if you, mm -hmm. if you buy all the mm -hmm. stuff. So it's quite, it's quite a bit cheaper to, to build your own car. Right. Sam, is your grandson going to take part? This no, year? no. He, he, yeah. uh, has stepped aside from that. But, uh, <laughs> he and I had fun doing it, but you uh, got a granddaughter. Well, that's true. See? I don't think yeah, she's quite old enough. Okay, that, but, uh, <laughs> she may want to come up yeah. and, and. Ray, and what about that. your family? Have you have got some? Uh, yeah, uh, and well, the first year I had two grandsons mm -hmm. that raced, and then the I had another grandson that was old enough to race the year that the Lions Club took it over, and and so I've had three race for the last two years. Uh, and I think I have a granddaughter this year. She's old enough to run in the eight and nine, and she says that she's going to race and win. So, <laughs> and she very well may. And uh, so <laughs> she's uh, so. I've actually got four cars now. Okay. Because uh, it, you yeah. know, they're since we've changed it where they can race against each other. I got three of them that can race in the same classes. So. Uh, when's the practice session? I don't think we discussed. The practice that much. will be Thursday. They can practice okay. Thursday. We're going to open the track at three o'clock on Thursday for mm -hmm. them to practice, and they can make a couple practice runs and then qualify, make a qualifying run. Uh, last year, uh, we actually had a speed gun where we could we could check their speed if they wanted that, and and it's just it's just kind of a bragging rights for them that they qualified it. <laughs> at 32 miles an hour or 34 miles an hour so hey, just try great. to make it as fun as we can for uh, it really is a it's a great a great event and i'm really happy that we were able to continue it because there was a little bit of doubt there after the bicentennial if we were going to be able to keep it going and and you guys uh, sam and and you and all the other lions guys stepped forward and and took it over so uh, we uh, we owe you a lot a lot for that our well, motto is we serve <laughs> Very good. It's the Lions Club. Yeah, and, and like yeah, Sam said, this is not a money-making project for us. Uh, no. We just try to cover our expenses, and and you know, in the first year, we even took some money out of our treasurer to mm -hmm. to get it started, so that we had some operating funds to start from. So. Uh, we put money into it too. Once again, Ray, uh, people can find out a lot of info on the website about it. That's right. Uh, like there's some phone numbers there probably they can call. If they my phone number is on there. They can call my uh, cell phone and my email is on there that they can email me questions or, or you know, anything that they have on my app. And they can bring out the cars. Uh, they can be four years old now and and ready to go. Yeah. Put a little yeah. oil on the wheels, I guess, and off and, you go. And a little graphite. <laughs> a little graphite, and yep, they're ready to go. New brake pad. Well, we hope there's a, a great turnout, and the weather is good, and the fans come out. And, Ray, we want to thank you for joining us here today to talk about the Downhill Derby coming up on the third Friday, Saturday, and Sunday of June here in Connersville. Thanks again. Thank you. Thanks, everybody, for watching the Spartan Sports Report here on TV3.